Hi everyone, I'm Mina and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to see you here. Please make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you haven't already. That really helps to support me and let's get straight into this video. So if you watch my day in the life video and if you haven't already make sure you check that video out i'll link it in the description box below but i promised kind of like a reveal of my godot final project for game programming and so that's what you're going to be watching today this is the first game that i've ever programmed myself and so i'm pretty excited about it we had a total of five weeks to make it but we had no previous knowledge or at least i didn't of this game engine before coming into this class so really I took about two weeks and kind of just to learn all of the basics and then after that I kind of continue learning while kind of starting to work on my project. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. So I think I'm going to lay this video out by kind of just showing you a demo of what my final game looks like and then afterwards I'll kind of go into more details about the process, what I did, and the different details of the game engine that I learned about. So this is kind of what the main menu looks like right here. So I'll go ahead and play it for all of you. Hopefully you can hear that I added some kind of audio and background sound effects here. But this is what it looks like. I'm gonna make that a little quieter, but this is what the main menu looks like. And so you can see there's this how to section and it just gives you a little bit of the instructions on how to play. So basically your mouse needs to be hovering over the block that you want to pick up or drop. And in order to pick it up, you hit the A button to drop it. You put, hit the S and the movement is just the arrow keys. So let's X out of that and we can start playing. So this is what the game level looks like. Initially, I was planning on adding a lot more levels so that the user can kind of go through and make the levels more challenging as the user goes on. Unfortunately, I didn't really have enough time to create as many levels as I wanted. So we're just kind of dealing with the one level here, but this is what I have. So I have this little gumdrop uh, character here. So the idea is that you want to place these spiral blocks in certain positions on the field such that you would be able to get to the end door. And so it's kind of like a puzzle, but you're also racing against time. So the faster you're able to complete this level, the higher your level score will be. And you can also see that there's these stars that you can score as well. So there's three stars on this specific level. And the more stars that you receive, the higher your score will be at the end. So I'll go ahead and kind of play it for you. So first I'm gonna collect that star. I'm not sure if you heard that, but there are actually sound effects there. And so in order to pass this level, what you end up realizing is you need to first get this block, kind of get that star there, um, place it here, get this block, then get this block over here, put that right there. And then this is the final block that you need there. And then after you do that, you're finished. And so this is the level complete game, what the UI looks like. So you can see the number of stars that you collected, the number of seconds that it took you to kind of reach the end of the door, and then your score. And so this score is calculated by multiplying the number of stars that you collect times the reciprocal of the time, and then multiply that by 100 in order to get your score and then you kind of go back to the main menu. So now I want to take you through a little bit on the different elements that I have to this game. So all of the elements of this game, I actually designed myself using Procreate on the iPad Pro. And so, you know, I chose the color schemes and I made the characters. Godot is programmed in several different languages, including like C Sharp. But what we ended up learning in class and through the different tutorials is the kind of built-in programming language called GDScript. And it's very, very similar to Python, if you know what that is. So the different levels are actually created using what's called a tile map, as you can see right here. So this node is a tile map. Basically, what I ended up having to do was I designed all of these different tiles in Procreate, and then I kind of just imported it as this tile set. And then you can just edit these different properties here. And so this is really cool because the tile maps allow you to super easily edit kind of like the ground and the different elements of your game. I could very easily just remove these different blocks and then just like add them back wherever I wanted to add them. So that's really cool. Then the other thing that I wanted to show you is 
is how this player is set up. So basically what this player is, is it's a kinematic body 2D and that just means that it's a sprite that has different collision and physics properties associated with it. So this player is actually an animated sprite and as you can see here I have three different animations and some of them aren't necessarily animations but they're kind of included in the animation frames here just so that I could switch between them super easily depending on how the player was supposed to move. So you can see that the first one is for block and that's just one frame of the player holding the block. Then idle is just one frame of the player kind of looking like it's standing still. The final animation has two frames of the player kind of looking like it's walking. And so what the animation does is it quickly switches between these two different frames depending on the frame frames per second rate. And that gives the appearance of the 2D sprite kind of looking like it's walking. And then the final thing that I wanted to show all of you is what's called an HUD, which is more of like the user interface different elements. And so you can see that we have all of these different nodes that are under the HUD. So these are all of the different properties that you see associated with it. So for example, this background, you can easily hide and show there. And we have all of these different elements. And so you can see that this how to shows up when the how to button right here is clicked and these different values just appear and disappear as they should be. And so this is actually just coded pretty easily in the script, as you can see here. So whenever you're supposed to go to the menu, it shows all of these different elements or when a button is pressed, you want to hide these different elements. And so the HAD makes it really easy to have all of your different elements for the user interface show up in one place and then just easily show or hide them depending on what you want to show to the user. So I don't want to go too much into detail on the Godot game engine just because I'm not super advanced with it. I only spent five weeks learning it. I really enjoyed making the game through Godot because it was just pretty easy to follow and I realized that there was a lot more functionality there than you would initially think from the Godot game engine just because it appears fairly simple. But I really enjoyed it and so I don't know if I have time I may make more games using Godot just because it's so much fun to play around with. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm going to be posting two more videos for the other two projects that we're making in this class. So the next project that we're going to be working on is from the Unity game engine, and then the final project is from Unreal. And so I'm very, very excited about those projects. I'm not really sure about the idea of what I want to do for those just yet but make sure that you're on the lookout for those videos over the next several weeks. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it and make sure you subscribe and leave any comments that you have in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them and see you guys in my next video. Bye.